Hello. Uh, so I've been getting this question so much lately. Uh, how do I deal with parody and multi-blend? Um, not always worded that way. Sometimes people ask me like which way I memo in multi-blend, which way I ex execute, how do I do edge parody, all of those different questions. And so this is going to be a video series, I think uh, in total, probably three separate videos on this topic, um, just explaining in detail all the different ways to deal with parody and multi-blind, maybe not all of them, but uh, a lot of them, and then I will build up to how I deal with parody and explaining that in detail and then just developing more on that. The parody method that I use is actually, I think, very rare because uh, unless other people have figured it out on their own, uh, and just not talked about it really. I may be one of the only people who uses this method. And so it's not the easiest thing to explain. So whenever people are asking me about it online, I just, uh, I don't really want to type it all out. <laughs> so that's the purpose of this video. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling and get onto it. This video will be basically just talking about like more of a background of how most people deal with parody and multi-blind. And then I will get into transitioning into how I figured out what I use now. I'm just going to start with talking about 3x3 three three blindfolded, just the very basics. Uh, basically when somebody starts 3blind, uh, they kind of just, depending on what tutorial they used, they uh, use the memo and solving order just based on whatever that person who made the tutorial told them to do. Your your memorization order usually depends on your, like the way that you know how to solve uh, the cube. So like if you only know a method that can solve edges first and then corners, you're probably gonna memorize corners and then edges. Um, just cause that's basically like the optimal way to memorize, um, time optimal, I guess. Um, I'd say the most standard thing that people do on like a beginner's level uh, is they use DF buffer for edges, UBL buffer for corners with M2 method for edges and Old Pachman for corners, which probably the most common memo and solving order for that would be memorizing corners and edges and then solving edges and then corners where you fix M2 parity with some terrible M2 alg and then usually this like D prime L2 D M2 D prime L2 D alg, which fixes the M slice and swaps those two. And that is just a terrible alg. That brings me to my first point. If you're at that point that I just described, DF UBL M2 OP, and you use that stupid alg or like some kind of alternate, there are some like wide R's instead of M2 stuff that you can do. The next step is just using the memo swap, the memo edge swap. Um, if you haven't heard of this, I'm going to put a link to my friend Josh Weimer's uh, advanced M2 tutorial. Um, not sure this technique really counts as advanced M2, but uh, he explains it in that video nonetheless, and it's a really easy thing to pick up. Essentially, in a nutshell, you just, uh, if you memorize corners first and you note that you have parity in corners, then when you're tracing edges, you just pretend that the, for me, the UF, I mean the UL and UB stickers are the uh, red and green yellow face stickers. Um, and you just basically act like this piece belongs there and that piece belongs there. And then you'll always end up with an even number of edge targets. You'll never get an, a parity target and you'll never have to do that D prime L2 D stupid thing. Um, so that's a really quick fix to never have parity in 3x3 three three blindfolded. One thing to note is that that memo swap technique works with any two edges, uh, but all that it depends on is what corner parity set you use. So like if you're using old Pachman with the UBL buffer, you're probably using uh, UL and UB because that gives like all the best parity algs, like Y perm for instance, that swaps those two edges and your buffer with this. Um, as opposed to like, it, it obviously would be like a dumb choice to use like these two uh, edges as your two swap 
because then you would have to use you'd have to come up with a parity set that swaps those two edges and that corner with any other sticker corner sticker and those are probably all way worse outs than like anything from these three pieces and any other corner target but anyways the next slight development is something that's more recently becoming popular is people switching buffers to uf edges and ufr corners and the way people would deal with parity in that case is fairly similar to what i just mentioned basically instead of using the ulub swap since the best parity set for ufr to any corner piece includes swapping UF and UR, like for instance, UFR to UBR, that would just be a J perm, swaps those two edges in those two corners. Another example is like to uh, RDF. That, that, that's just like a cyclic shifted J perm. This part can be kind of confusing when switching to this because you're going to end up having to do a memo swap that includes your buffer. And so for a lot of people, that's a big holdup during memo. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to just thinking about uh, when you get parity, you basically have to pretend that your buffer is this piece and not that piece. Uh, it's just a little bit of a mental hurdle, but practice makes perfect. And eventually you don't have to think about it at all. So basically for multi-blind, you need to optimize for the fact that you want to execute the pieces in the same order that you memorize them in. Uh, let's say in three blind, your execution method only works for solving edges first and then corners second, but you always are memorizing corners and then edges uh, because that's best for like doing audio edges or whatever. If you're moving to multi-blind, Memorizing corners before edges would mean that you're constantly memorizing and then doing all your reviews, corners and then edges, but then when you go to solving everything, your natural inclination is going to be to think about the corner memo first, because that's probably where you put them in the room that you used. The first part of the room is going to have the corner, mem corner memo, so that means you're going to have to like go to some later part in the room and then jump backwards, and you're also just going through the memo in a totally jumbled way compared to the way that you reviewed it over and over again just like 10 minutes ago, you know? Which makes just think ahead and everything so much more difficult and I guess just opens up a lot more uh, possibility for mistakes, which is not good. The first thing you need to figure out in multi-blend is that you need to memorize the piece types in the same order you're going to solve them in. For example, for me, I solve edges and then corners in three blend, so I'm going to want to memorize edges and then corners in multi blend. Memorize in the same direction that you solve them in. But uh, the issue with this is that you can't implement that memo edge swap that you just uh, learned about because while you're memorizing edges, you don't know if you have parity or not because you haven't memorized corners yet. So, what do you do for parity? There are very different ways to deal with parity and multi-blind. Uh, let's say we start with the basic DFUBL with M2OP, uh, as we started with before. Um, the most basic and also the slowest I know of way to deal with parity would mean you just memorize edges and then you end up with an edge parity target. So like, uh, for instance, here's the edge parity target, um, FDRF. Uh, and then you can see you have corner parity, but you're not going to know that when you're memorizing. But the basic uh, DF solution with M2 would be do that M2 parity target. Then you have to do that stupid, really long algorithm. And so that's two really slow algs for solving a single edge target. And that's just like the most basic way of dealing with it. And that works for multi. If you're using that method for three blind, Doing multi is actually not going to be any different for you because uh, you don't need to have that information if you have corner parity or not beforehand. But um, let's say you don't know that parity fixing method and you've always been doing the memo edge swap. You're not going to know what to do if you end up with parity memorizing edges and then corners and then solving edges and corners in, in multi-blind. So something you could do for this 
Same case, uh, let's say you've got that parity target. One thing you could do is two commutators, which would be shooting here to any of these four stickers. And then you would have one more commutator to uh, swap those two edges. And then that would solve this target and swap those two edges, which is essentially the same thing as doing that N2 solution for this and then the D-prime L2D alg would do. So like uh, we could do here, that was there to there to there, that commutator. And then the next commutator would be, uh, we wanna solve this piece right there, and then that piece right there, and then we would have those two swapped. The comma I used for that is uh, a canceled U perm. And then, yeah, you've done the same thing, but just two commutators, which is definitely faster than that stupid uh, M2 solution, but still fairly slow, relatively. So the next uh, further development on that that you could do is start using um, 2E, 2E Alex. 2E, 2E stands for two edge, two edge. Basically, it's just that you uh, swap two edges and then swap two edges somewhere else on the cube. In this case, you would want to swap these two and then swap those two. And uh, basically, the solutions uh, for all of these two edge, two edge cases are going to be something you can gen on Cube Explorer or maybe like two commutators canceled with each other. Um, for this case, the solution is this weird uh, R-U-M-S alg. I think that's what it is, yeah. But it goes like that. And that, as you can see, solved those two and swapped those two. And so for learning all of those 2E2E -E algs to solve any possible edge parity target with the DF buffer would be 22 algorithms which is not that bad, especially considering four of them are just comms that you would already know for this buffer. So yeah, that's probably the best way to deal with uh, parity and multi-blind if you are using DF UBL with the ULEB swap. And now uh, one thing, this may be obvious, but I'll talk about it anyways. If you're not using DF and UBL, let's say instead you're using UF and UBL, you can still use 2E2E to swap the, uh, these two edges and whatever your parity target is. All right, so for example, uh, we can see we've got corner parity here to here, and our edge parity target is there to there. Uh, obviously, this solution is just a Z perm because we've got to swap that and swap that. So that's the 2E2E two -E alg, and then you just solve corner parity. So really this uh, 2E2E -E method can be applied to any two buffers that you want. Um, it just means that you're gonna have to learn that 2E2E -E set. So like in the UF UBL case, you would need to learn uh, this to any uh, non these pieces and then plus those two swapping. And now uh, we dive into the magic of UF, UFR, um, this is basically going to be what I'm talking about from here on out and why these videos are necessary because not that many people know about how you deal with parity with UF, UFR. Now, I um, might be about to blow some of your minds. Uh, when you're doing edge, corner, edge, corner, um, so like memorizing edges, memorizing corners, and then solving in the same order for multi-blind with UF, UFR buffers, uh, since your edge swap includes your your edge buffer, your parity solution is literally just going to be a commutator from whatever your edge parity target is to UR. No 2E2E two -E required. That is technically your 2E2E two -E -E, given this uh, buffer combination and edge swap. Now I'll just show a, a basic example. All right, so I've just set up where our edge uh, or our corner parity is UFR to UBR, and our edge parity is UF to LB. This is a very obvious solution, um, very very brief example, but our edge parity solution is literally just going to be the commutator from here to here to here. So insertion, interchange, undo insertion, undo interchange, and then we just got the corner parity. 
and that applies to literally any target uh, like look that's our edge parity target it's just going to be com from there to there to there and then corner parity so that is one of the biggest advantages in my in my opinion if you really care about multi-blend that's one of the biggest advantages of switching from uh, basically any any set of buffers that doesn't include an edge swap that includes your edge buffer um, to UFUFR with UFUR swap. Because instead of doing a 2E2E two -E alg or two comms to solve every time you have edge parity, you just have a single commutator. And it's a single commutator involving UR, which is one of the fastest sets of comms for the UF buffer. All right, so the next video is going to be further developments on this. So this is the most basic way of dealing with parity with UF UFR, and there are actually a lot of things that can shave off a lot of stuff that you're going to have to memorize and solve in a multi-blind attempt. And I will start talking about that in the next video.